Get started. Take it away. Okay, hi all, I'm Nikita. I'm a developer advocate at Google and joined today by my teammate, Eric. My name is Eric, Google Cow AI engineer. We're excited to be here today. Awesome, may I change the slide? Oh shoot, the slides aren't showing. Can you guys? Oh, you can't see the slides. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so today we are going to give you an overview of how to do distributed training with PyTorch on Google Cloud using Vertex AI. There are a lot of different ways to do distributed training, so our goal today is to just kind of like give you an overview for a bunch of different ways that this might be possible. But before we do all of that, I always think it's useful to just kind of give us a little bit of context and step back and remind ourselves why we might use distributed training in the first place, why are we going to all this effort? So as we all know, when model training takes a few hours or a few days, it's pretty easy to iterate and experiment and try out new ideas. But when model training is taking like weeks or months, it really slows you down, becomes a lot harder to iterate and experiment. So using the right distributed training configuration can dramatically reduce training time. And fat, shorter training time, of course, makes for faster iteration to reach your modeling goals. And who doesn't want that? However, unfortunately, distributed training does come with its own set of challenges. So first, you've got to make some kind of change to your PyTorch code, right? Maybe you're using like DDP. Are you doing some kind of model parallelism setup? Whatever you decide to do, there's some change that needs to happen at the PyTorch code level. But then, all of a sudden, you're like worrying about managing infrastructure and submitting jobs and clusters and dealing with fault tolerance. And then you have to optimize usage of your accelerators and deal with limited bandwidth between your nodes. So there's all this extra complexity that gets tacked on once we enter the realm of distributed training. So what we want to show you today is, at a high level, how you can leverage managed manage services on Google Cloud that will hopefully reduce the friction of running and operationalizing distributed training of your PyTorch models. And the focus is less on how to change your PyTorch code, but more on how to use these Google Cloud tools to um, run this code at scale. And the main tool we will use today is Vertex AI. This is Google Cloud's managed machine learning platform. There are a lot of different products to cover the whole kind of ML workflow but our focus will really be on the training service today. And then at the end, Eric will talk a little bit about pipelines as well as our prediction service. So running a custom training job on Vertex AI is done with the use of containers. You'll package up your training code along with any dependencies that you need, and then you can specify your desired hardware configuration, and this includes adding GPUs or TPUs, both of which are available to you when you use PyTorch on Google Cloud. And then you'll submit a remote job to run on the training service, and you won't be worrying about provisioning or managing servers, nothing like that. However, there is an interactive debugging service if you want to SSH in, poke around while your training jobs are running. And then there are a couple of other tools that I won't get to talk about today, but I did want to mention. When you run custom training with Vertex AI, you can use the automated hyperparameter tuning service. You can integrate with managed TensorBoard, which will allow you to set up a TensorBoard instance to track your experiments. And then there is an experiment tracking service as well, all to help you discover the optimal model faster. Now, since this service works via containers, Vertex AI provides a set of pre-built training containers for PyTorch. These contain kind of common dependencies that you might be using in your training code. They're updated regularly. And if one of these containers meets your needs, so it has all the dependencies that you need, you can package up your code as a Python source distribution and then let Vertex manage the container for you. But if you want some like custom dependencies, you just want more control, then you can use a custom container, and that's what we will show you today. And we'll start by looking at GPU training on Vertex AI. So your Docker file for your custom image might look something like this. I'm actually using the pre-built training container here as my base image. We copy over our training code. It's probably defining our model, executing a training loop, that kind of thing. If you want to install any additional libraries, you can add that in here. And then we set up our entry point to invoke our trainer, and that'll run our training code. So once you have built your image, the main way you'll interact with the Vertex AI service is via the Python SDK. 
So you're going to create this thing called a custom container training job. Kind of a mouthful, but it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a training job for a custom container. And you'll need to pass in the URI to where your container image is, either in a Google Cloud Container Registry or Google Cloud Artifact Registry, which are two places to manage your containers. And then you can call run. And when you call the run method, you will specify the machine type for this job. You can specify any accelerators you want. And this is basically what it would look like to do single machine, single GPU training on Vertex. If we want to enter into the realm of distributed training, we can just bump up the accelerator count. Now it's set to four. And this is single machine and multi-GPU training. Now, of course, this is assuming that you have like, updated your training code to be able to work with distributed training. This would work with you know, torch.multiprocessing, torch run, PyTorch Lightning, et cetera, as long as you set that up in your training code. And then when we submitted a job, we can track the progress in the Cloud Console. So here you can see all of your jobs. You can even go into one of the particular jobs, check out the logs if anything goes wrong, see what container image you used, what the configura configuration was, et cetera. So this is kind of like step one when we start to think about what it means to operationalize machine learning and machine learning training. We're not just like running directly in a notebook on someone's VM, but we've actually packaged up our code in such a way that we can run these reproducible, repeatable experiments, and hopefully, at some point, move those experiments into a pipeline that we can rerun on a regular cadence for continuous training. So we've talked a little bit about distributed training on a single machine with multiple GPUs, but what about if we want to train across multiple machines? Things get a little more complex here, of course, and this is where using a managed service can be really helpful. So the main concept that you'll need to understand from the Vertex AI side is called a worker pool. Vertex provides up to four worker pools that cover the common machine tasks that you might encounter when doing distributed training. So you can think of a worker as just a single machine, a single node, and a worker pool as a collection of machines that are all performing similar tasks. So in worker pool zero, we would define our primary worker. This is also known as the chief or the scheduler. And when I say define this worker pool, I just mean specifying the machine type, specifying what container image you want it to run, and then whether or not you want accelerators. If you want additional workers, you would specify those in worker pool, two, worker pool one. And then if you're using some kind of parameter server architecture, you would specify that in worker pool two. This is also where you would add any reducers, and I will cover that in just a minute. And worker pool three is where you would add any optional evaluators. So if you want a machine that's just running evaluation on your training job, you can set that up here in worker pool three. So your combination of different workers is really going to depend on how you've decided to distribute training in your PyTorch code. Um, but you're totally flexible on the Vertex side in terms of how you want to configure this cluster. So if we wanted to do, for example, multi-machine, multi-GPU training, again, we create our custom container training job. We pass in our image. And then my poorly formatted code here, sorry about that, um, we're specifying a replica count of three. So that would be one primary worker, two additional workers. So you can think of this as like a DDP setup. Each worker has two accelerators on it. And this is how you would configure this on the Vertex side. And if you're a Torch Run user, because I think a lot of people are, um, the way you do this is you can pass in the command that you want to be invoked when your container is started. And this will override any entry point instructions that you have in your Docker file. In this case, our command is Torch Run and then our rendezvous backend um, arguments, followed by the Python file we want to run. That's task.py. We pass in this command to our custom container training job, and then again, we call job.run. And this is how you would run a multi-machine, multi-GPU training job using Torch Run on Vertex AI. So there's one other optimization I want to mention before we look at TPUs. Um, and this is something you can take advantage of if you are doing a distributed training setup where you've got some kind of synchronous data parallel algorithm. So before I do that, I'm going to attempt to give like the world's briefest refresher on data parallelism in less than a minute. I'll see if I can. So let's say we have two GPU workers, and we want to distribute training across both of them. The way you do this in a data parallel setting is you take your input data, you split it in half, you send one to one worker, the other half to the other worker. 
In this case, each worker is going to compute the same ops, but on different slices of the data. So they'll both compute the forward pass, compute the loss, then calculate gradients based on the loss function. And now we have two sets of gradients. So in synchronous data parallelism world, we want to reduce those multiple sets of gradients into one set of gradients, and we will do that via an operation called an all reduce. And the way you do this reduction, you want to pass the data as efficiently as possible, use as little bandwidth as possible. So there are a lot of different algorithms that do this reduction efficiently. You might be familiar with ring all reduce or tree-based algorithms. But on Vertex AI, we have a feature called Reduction Server, which is specifically there to optimize the bandwidth and latency of multi-node distributed training on NVIDIA GPUs for synchronous data parallel algorithms. The way this works is that Reduction Server introduces a new worker role called a reducer, and reducer's only jobs, a job is to take blocks of gradients from the GPU workers, reduce them, and then redistribute those gradients back to all of our workers. And because of this limited functionality, they can run on relatively inexpensive compute nodes, and this means that um, additionally, the uh, latency of Reduction Server doesn't depend on the number of workers. So again, you can use um, Reduction Server if you are working with a distributed training framework that's using NVIDIA's Nickel library to do the all reduce um, operation. None of that made any sense. Don't worry about it. Um, Eric's going to share the more fun stuff, which is his benchmarking results that he ran with Reduction Server. Yeah, it sounds great. To benchmark Reduction Server's performance, we set up an experiment for a PyTorch training job in a multi nodes and multi process environment. When comparing the training result between with and without Reduction Server, we see that Reduction Server was able to significantly increase the training throughput and reduce the training time. The result here is really, really, really amazing. We're very happy about the, the benchmark result, but we also understand that the real impact that reduction server is going to bring really depends on the characteristic of your training workload. Awesome. So like I said, you can take advantage of reduction server if you are using a distributed training framework that uses NVIDIA Nickel to do your all reduce operation. Um, you don't need to make any additional changes to your PyTorch code. What you need to do is make sure you have the transport plugin installed in your container image. This is already included in our Vertex pre-built containers for PyTorch. So if you aren't using one of those, you can just add the installation step in your Docker file. And then when you submit your training job, you'll need to specify some reduction server reducers. And that's what I've got going on over here. You can see that there are four reduction server reducers that I've added. I specified the machine type and also the container image to run on them. And this is what multi-machine, multi-GPU with reduction server would look like. So GPUs are not the only accelerator available to you on Google Cloud. You can also use TPUs with PyTorch. And TPU support on Vertex is currently in preview. TPUs are custom ASICs built by Google for deep learning at scale. You can write your program for a single chip scale to hundreds of chips for sustained um, perf per dollar. And they do support a few different frameworks, of course, including PyTorch. So if you want to use PyTorch with TPUs, you will need to use the PyTorch XLA library. This uses the XLA compiler to basically connect PyTorch to cloud TPUs. And then you'll also need to initialize the TPU setup in your custom container. We have some samples on how that works. If you want a simpler path, you can actually use PyTorch Lightning, um, which will use XLA under the hood. You just need to set the number of TPU cores in your trainer. And this actually makes it really nice to move between TPU and GPU training. Um, and you can do this, use this on Vertex. So again, we'll run a custom container training job. We'll package up our job. And when we specify the hardware, this time we just want to specify a TPU. I've set the accelerator count here to eight, but if we were to bump that up to 32, that would actually be a full TPU pod that you could use on Vertex AI. Now, we've looked at a bunch of different ways to configure and submit training jobs on Vertex, um, but I think the story always feels a little incomplete to stop here, because training is just sort of like step one, right? What happens when we want to take these experiments, do something more with them, thinking about, like, continuous training, that sort of thing. So Eric's going to wrap up today by talking a little bit about how we can operationalize our training jobs and use, uh, use Vertex pipelines in the process. Thanks, Nikita. Yeah, exactly. 
we know that launching our models into the real world is more than just building it. To bring your models to life, you ad hoc and manual is not going to work. You need to have an automatic machine learning process. The process here is not, good, not only to help you to deploy the model to production, with automation and continuous training, it also helps you to scale your machine learning use cases and ensure your models are always in line with your business goal. This is really about operationalized machine learning at scale. The million dollar question here is how. This is where Vertex AI pipeline come into place. What is Vertex AI pipeline? It's a fully managed service on Google Cloud. So with the pipeline, you can manage machine learning process in an automatic, scalable, and cost-effective way. On your right-hand side, this is the pipeline for the PyTorch training job Nikita just introduced, starting from training all the way to deployment. This is a complete end-to-end -end machine learning workflow. Let's take a look at some of the key components of the pipeline. The first key step of the pipeline is to build a custom training container image. We use a pre-built PyTorch image as a base, package the training application Nikita just introduced, and then build the training image. The output of this step sent to the next step to run the training job with Vertex AI training and reduction server to build the PyTorch model. Another key step here is to build is it? We lost our slides. Yeah, can we go back? Yeah, it's right here. So another key step here is to build a customer serving container image. We use Torch Serve image here as a base and install all the required dependencies to run the Torch Serve to serve model prediction. The beauty of the pipeline here, each of the step running its own container. So you can develop the step independently and track the input and output from each step in a reproducible way. And the pipeline handles all the underlying infrastructure for you, so you can run your same pipeline in the dev environment as in your production environment, making your deployment process much, much simpler. So with that, let me hand it back to Nikita to wrap this up. Cool. And if you want to learn a little bit more about pipelines, we do have a poster um, using TorchX with um, Vertex AI pipelines, if you're curious. But so today, we looked at a variety of different ways that you can run distributed training of your PyTorch models on Google Cloud using Vertex AI, whether you're doing single node, multi-node training, using GPUs, using TPUs. Hopefully, you've learned a little about how you can leverage these services to scale your PyTorch workflows. So we've got some resources here if you want to learn more about how to use PyTorch with Vertex AI. But we are constantly building new demos, new tutorials, new things. So if there's something specific you want to see, please come find us. Come tell us. Find us in the happy hour later. Uh, we'd love to hear what you'd like to see. Um, like I said, we love building new, new sample code. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>